Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about sewing tool. Here I have three different samples. One has like a very thick, wide glitter texture that's applied with a glue. That is style number 329965. It's got a nice weight to it, which I love because if you were to gather or do some sort of application of pleats or embellishment, anything that would enhance the, like kind of modify the way that the fabric is laying, you get a lot of dimension, especially because of all of the glitter. But like I said, that adds like a really nice weight to it. So there's a million possibilities. It is tool, so because it is a netting type base, it has a little bit of stretch and the stretch runs from selvage to selvage. So there are a lot of really awesome possibilities with this guy. Our next sample is item number 329972. This is a Starlet Luxury Gold and White Ombre Tool. It has a smaller or finer glitter that's applied, so it doesn't add as much weight to this particular tool. Again, you get a little bit of stretch. And when I say stretch, I just mean you have elasticity, not necessarily that this is a stretch fabric. But depending on what your design is, consider that you get a little bit of stretch from salvage to salvage. The last sample is a very basic micro tool. This is item number 115820 and it is in a blush. You can kind of see the color a little better when I gather it. This is a good tip for when you are shopping for tool fabrics. Typically when it's on the bolt or the roll, you'll be able to see the, the color a lot better. I always like to get a decent sized swatch. So when I take it back to my studio, I know exactly what color I need to match my thread and my embellishments to if I am to purchase this particular tool fabric. When you're cutting tool fabrics, it's definitely preferred that you use a rotary cutter. This is the Tula Pink rotary cutter. It has a 45 millimeter blade. You can find this on the Mood website. It is also ambidextrous. So it works for left-handed or right-handed, and it has a retractable, and it has a retractable shield that you can open and close. So even when it's in your drawer, you don't have to worry about cutting yourself, any accidents. Tool fabric has a lot of static, and that's just like a natural occurrence because the weave of the tool is so open that it allows for more possibility for there to be like a static charge between the layers. It is better that you use a static guard spray and you use that like at a decent distance. It usually says on the can how far or how close to use on the fabric. Um, tool also has a very low melting threshold, which means that you are, you really shouldn't be using the iron at all when you are pressing or adding any heat to your tool fabric because it will melt. Steam is a better option. It's easier to control the temperature setting. We're gonna talk a little bit about sewing and what types of techniques you can use with tool fabrics. Always use silk pins because the weave of the tool is very fine. You don't wanna make any pulls or damage the fabric because then you'll have to recut your entire piece again and start from the beginning. It's the worst. I cannot tell you how many times I've had that experience before. It is unpleasant. So silk pins, rotary cutter. The rotary cutter is awesome because tool moves around so much that when you have a rotary cutter and rotary mat, you can use weights as well. The cutting is a lot more precise and the fabric will not shift. So you get a nice, even, really clean cut versus using scissors, which can be really complicated because the fabric tends to move a lot. It's very slippery. Even with using silk pins, 
complicates things because your fabric tends to shift. So I got a really jagged edge by using the scissor. Granted, I rushed. If you have the patience and prefer to use scissors and pins, by all means, use the silk pins or use a rotary cutter and rotary mat. So now I have my tool samples. I have placed my silk pins so that I have two pieces, two layers that are face to face or the right sides facing. So in the case with the glitter, the glitter is glitter to glitter. And for our lighter weight of the two, glitter sides are facing. There's not technically a right or a wrong side with most tools unless they have an embellishment like the glitter or some sort of print or anything special like that. So before we jump right into it, let's go through some pointers. If you sew directly onto this tool because it's so lightweight, similar to a chiffon or an organza, the machine is going to eat it. So the needle is going to push the fine weight of this fabric down through the feed dogs and it's going to jam up your machine. So before anything else, you're going to want to be sure that your settings are correct. Do a practice sample and I'm using a black thread so you can see the contrast on the samples that I'll be doing. So I have my machine set to a straight stitch and I'm between a length three and four. Um, it's not preferred that you use smaller stitches because they will get lost in the netting of the tool. So practice with stitches that are a little bit longer than you would usually use. Another great tip is I just cut these one inch wide strips of pattern paper. If you have tissue paper or even um, like, like a roll of receipt paper, I used to have one and that was like my go-to for this because it was so convenient, like this little thing I could just like throw into my toolkit, but I have pattern paper, so that's just as good. This is a little bit lighter weight than printer paper, so I would not recommend it going even that high, and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. So we're gonna start with the regular tool. Again, this is item number 115820, and it is a blush, super soft, lightweight tool. So I'm gonna match up my square corner, my edge, squared edge, if you will, with the top edge of my two layers of tulle. I'm not gonna pin my fabric to the paper because then it's gonna make my pieces shift because there'll be too much tension between the pin, the paper, and the fabric. So I'm just gonna leave my, my little piece of pattern paper right along the edge of my tulle. Another fun tip, which I'm not going to use only because it's a preference, you can take a piece of scotch tape and put it underneath the front half of your presser foot and it keeps the fabric from getting stuck. So the tape is almost going to make like a faux Teflon foot. A Teflon foot is typically used for sewing leather. It has a plastic foot rather than a metal foot and the fabric will just glide right off of that. So Again, if you don't have a Teflon foot, you can just put scotch tape at the front and the back, or if you want to get really technical, you can put the scotch tape down the entire presser foot. Again, you were using your regular presser foot, and then you could just cut out where the opening is there. That will help prevent the fabric from getting stuck or jamming. I'm gonna start out with, and, and you want to sew slow for sure, take your time. So I did a few stitches and then I'm going to reverse. I'm going to continue sewing. Take your pin, pins out. Always take your pins out, but like you don't want to sew over them. It's just, it's not worth like the potential for damage to, to your machine, the potential for the pins to fly back at you. It's just, it's not worth it. So always take your pins out as you get to them. And I'm just using a standard size needle. I believe this is a 14. You can use an 11, a 12, but um, you don't want to use any thicker than a 14 because it can damage your fabric because it is so thick and the netting of the tool is so fine. And as I get to the end, I'm going to do a back tack. Okay, 
so now that I've taken my sample off the machine, got my little loose threads, I'm gonna show you the backside. So you can see that my machine needle has perforated the paper, put in all these little dots. So I'm just gonna fold, fold this paper back along that sewn seam, be really delicate. Okay, be more delicate than me. <laughs> so once you have folded that along the perforation line, if you feel more confident, you can even fold it back to that side. Now that you've folded your paper a few times, you can just rip this and be very, very, I like to hold one side of the paper down with my thumb, ignore my manicure, and pull the other side. So it's like you're almost only just pulling the paper because you don't want to pull your stitches so be more delicate than me you're only pulling like paper from paper not the actual fabric there we go that's better so you should hear that like popping sound because that's your perforated holes breaking from one another that ah. practice makes perfect People. And then if you get little like cacas like that, you can cut them or just be very delicate. I definitely should have made my tension a little higher because I'm getting like this kind of bounce between my threads, between my top thread and my bobbin, which I don't hate, but it's not perfect. So now I'm going to open this up. And that is how you sew tulle. You could always do it as, so you're obviously gonna use the same color thread. <laughs> you're obviously gonna use the same color thread as your fabric, so you could always do like a French seam, which would be to sew your seam allowance to the wrong side, and then you would fold this over, and you would catch all of your seam allowance and you can always trim that first and then fold this over. And you wouldn't have to do any clean finishing, quote unquote. Obviously this would need to be a, like a hair bigger than the seam allowance that you've sewn. I should be using paper, but I'm gonna just try this. Okay, obviously I have a high, um, I have a lot of trust in this machine. I don't recommend trying that at home, but I just wanted to show you this French seam. So now the seam allowance is bound inside of here. So technically, this would be on the inside of the fabric, the inside of your garment, and that would be the outside. So it's just like a fun little couture seam finish, if you will. You do not have to do the French seams at all. I just thought that was like a nice little tidbit for you, a little extra. Now we're gonna try out this gold, glimmery, gorgeous, beautiful, and this is a, the inside, mind you. That's the outside. So for this fabric, because it's a little thicker, I'm not gonna use the paper technique, but I am gonna try and sew significantly slower because whenever you have beading, or like, well, beading you can't sew through the machine, but like sequins, um, for the most part, you can sew thinner, smaller sequins through the sewing machine, but I'm comparing this glitter to that sort of like pressure, and I'm gonna sew really slow. Because you don't wanna break your sewing needle. You don't wanna damage the fabric. You could use the paper technique with this but it is not completely necessary. Just use a lot of pins. Boing. All right. So that is the inside. You could always pink this edge. You could use bias tape to kind of like cap that off if you wanted, or you could add a lining fabric. 
and that is the right side. You cannot even see that seam, that's crazy. The seam is here, so pretty. For our last sample, this is a much finer grit of glitter. It's a lot softer too. Not as much drape, not as much weight. But for this guy, I am gonna use one of my sheets of pattern paper. I feel like this fabric might be more slippery in my machine and that's why I'm using the paper as I sew. I'm gonna make my stitch a little smaller and I'm gonna be sure that my paper stays underneath my fabric. So just like we did on our earlier sample, I'm just gonna trim these little bad boys little tails should always have tails trim them later all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold back my pattern paper again you can use tissue paper or receipt paper printer paper is definitely too thick because when you fold it and rip it apart it's honestly it's going to rip your stitches out because we want this machine needle to really pierce the paper and printer paper is way too thick so once you fold over, hold your paper with one with one hand, and then you just tear along your seam. Did we did sew seams? And I know you're probably thinking, wait, but how do I press them out? If you must press them, like if you feel the absolute need to use the iron. Put it on the lowest setting possible and use a presser cloth because you do not want to melt this fabric. You should only ever really be using steam on tool and you don't want to use it directly on the tool because it will melt. So just be nice to your fabric. And that's sewing tool. So I hope this video helped you Practice makes perfect. Be sure to use your pattern paper or receipt paper for sewing your seams. Good luck, y'all.